who is here. So, we've just learnt that the um, Union Integrity Bill, the one that was voted down last week, goes back into the lower house tomorrow. And given the way procedures work, it is unlikely that it makes its way back to the Senate this year. So, Pauline, let's let's get to what happened yep. uh, last week. Now, uh, let's try and do sort of these as yes, no, before we get into anything more serious, right? Um, is there was okay. there a deal with the CFMEU for either poll workers or, uh, or, or or fundraising for the Queensland election? Therefore, you voted no. Nothing, Paul. Not a thing. No negotiation with anything ever was talked about ever. With let alone agreeing with it, no deal, even no talks of anything of that nature was talked about. Okay, preference deals uh, in and around Labor putting you last or not last in Queensland? No. No deals whatsoever. Albanese and Brendan O'Connor came up to my office that day. They wanted to see me. James turned them around and they said, we want to talk to her. I said, sorry, you're not going to talk to her. Pauline's made up her mind. You have to deal with that. Whichever way she goes with this, that you, sorry, you actually have to um, deal with that. Her decision. So they actually came up to talk to me about it. So no deals with Labor, nothing. They had no idea how I was going to vote. So if this is to come back next year, what would it take for you to change your vote? No, it's not about what, what it will take me to change my vote. It's the government. Paul, I'm sick and tired of white-collar crime in this country with the, banking, um, with the bank executives, what has happened in the banking sector. We're looking at the administrators, liquidators and receivers that's, that's tied up with the banking sector, have destroyed um, or family farms, taken their properties from them. They wanted to include this in the bill. They've actually passed that same week for, uh, the uh, free trade agreements that we're going to bring more foreign workers into the nation. We have an increase of the foreign visa workers from 1.8 million to 2.2 million foreign workers in the nation at the moment. I can see the union's point of view. But you know what, Paul? The whole thing is that I'm sick and tired. Whoever is in government, they bring in these, these laws to do with uh, union bashing, and then when the next one's in, they change it. It's about time we sat down with both the unions, the CFMEU, who is, this is all about the CFMEU, and we sit down with the industrial relations and we say, OK, guys, let's, let's have it out and let's see what agreement we can come to so that we can move forward as a nation. Because whoever's in government, they wind it back. And I'll tell the people out there, who, who supported the government with the ABCC bill? And that was to deal with the unions in the construction industry. Senator Reynolds said that I voted for a 30% increase in construction costs. She didn't have a bloody clue what she's talking about it because it had nothing to do with this bill. Who supported the government for the Rocks bill? There are all these organisations that they have structured to deal with unions. This is not about union bashing. We have a lot of good unions out there, have worked hard for the people's rights in this nation. The ordinary mums and dads out there who are the nurses, the tradies, the, the plumbers, the engineers and all, all this. And I am not going to go out union bash just to suit the government. I'm not the tail on the bloody dog and I'm not going to agree with them. I research my information, I've been criticised and I can tell you now, honestly Paul, I never ever gave them my guarantee I would vote for that bill. They assumed I would, but I never did and that's why they were shocked at the last minute because they took me for granted. So l last one here because I'm, I'm interested in and genuinely want to know about how the government negotiates or doesn't. Does Christmas give everyone a chance to have a reset? Do you want more regular meetings with uh, the Prime Minister, relevant ministers? You only want to talk to Cormann? Because there's a lot of water still to go in this parliament and, frankly, uh, they need uh, three cross branches to get anything done. You control two of them. I do, Paul, and I have always said I will work with anyone, you know, because... It, look, Corey will tell you, we, our positions on the crossbench is so important to this parliament and we've actually improved their legislation as a matter of fact the ABCC bill. Sometimes the government get, doesn't always get it right, we actually push good legislation to improve their bills. But I've always said if it's good legislation, I don't care who puts it up, as long as it's in the interest of the country and for the people, I will support it and I will fight for that. So I'm not just going to go out there and back anything because, and I'll tell you what happened, they said that I flip-flop. Do you know what happened to corporate tax cuts? They didn't have me over the line because I didn't believe it. 
Corman came to me with a big deal because my big issue at that time was the north was the northwest shelf, and the the gas that we export out there is about 54 billion dollars a year. We make about 400 million dollars a year in tax out of it. Canavan had no idea about that, and I had to inform him what was happening up there on the lose it and lo use it or lose it on the retention leases. Anyway, they came to me and they said. We, we will give you this deal, and I've got it in writing, mm. that if we address a PRRT, it will bring in $6 billion over 10 years in taxes. We will give you the asbestos plant that you want to get rid of asbestos in the country. We will give you the pipeline to actually look at the feasibility of pipeline to bring gas from the west to the east coast. You know what? I thought, wow, what a great deal. So then I actually agreed to the corporate tax cuts then. Mm. Over $50 million. Guess what? When I saw the budget handed down by the government, I thought, we can't afford this. We can't afford an extra $35 billion to the economy. We need to put the money into infrastructure projects to create employment. And that's why I voted that down. To say I flip-flopped, when I actually know the full information, I do my research, then I make my decisions. And isn't it funny that the head of the Reserve Bank, he actually agreed with me and so did Peter Costello in my decision. So when I know the full information and the research comes in, then I make a, an informed decision. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going out there to union bash against the mums and dads who are concerned because their, their full-time employment is being reduced to casualisation. They're bringing workers from overseas and we have to support the Australian worker out there and I will do it. If you want to get rid of the rogues, and I, I spoke to the CFMEU, I'll tell them, get re rid of your rogues out there because if you don't clean up your own act, then I will maybe think seriously about dealing with the unions in this country because you are destroying um, you know, the business opportunities and business who want to get ahead. But it's this thing where, uh, um, Pauline, I suppose people want to, w want to know is that, so in terms of this piece of legislation, um, don't bother bringing it back or there are things that can be done to this legislation because they're, they're going to bring it back? Do you know what, Paul? I actually spoke, sat down and spoke about a few weeks ago at the Master Builders Association dinner and I spoke, to, I happened to be sitting beside an industrial relations um, lawyer and I said, how would you feel about sitting down with the CFMEU and talking about the issues moving forward in this country? I said, without the workers, you won't have, um, you know, business won't survive and vice versa, you need both. She said, I'd love to do that. And, I, and so then, with that information, I then spoke to the CFMEU and I said, um, would you sit down in a round table with me to negotiate with, with industrial relations solicitor? They said, no problem. That's where we need to go with all this. If the Labor takes over the government next time around, what are they going to do? Reverse all these laws. It's about time we actually try to find an answer to all this to get these two groups to come together. Without one, you haven't got the other. And we have to find a common ground with everyone. That's where I'd like to go with this. We don't need those rogue. We don't, and I told them, we don't need the thuggery. We don't need the bullying. We don't need the corruption. But it's not only in some of the unions, but most of them are very, very good unions. This was going to entrap all those unions and those officials who may go on a board, that was going to leave them exposed and I felt that was unfair. If you're going to go over the rogues, fair enough. But there are rogues in white collar crime and what annoys me, Paul, is, is the multinationals in this country. The 750 multinational companies pay 600, they have $612 billion in, tax, in, in turnover a year. They pay $10 billion in tax. The government says we're going to rein them in. Guess what? They rein them in to the tune of an extra $125 million, 1.63% tax. Whoopie do. And, they, and the government, you know, they're going after uh, a couple of union rogues. Get your priorities right in this country. Go after the white collar crime. I'm not going to sit back and see the union bashing that's going on when we have a lot of white collar crime that is happening in Australia. Industrial relations needs to be reined in because the unfair dismissal laws is destroying employment in the country. These needs to be, these things need to be addressed. And when you have a, a, a traffic, um, uh, what do they call them? A oh, the lollipop, the $180,000 lollipop person. Yeah, yeah.
Exactly right. How <laughs> ridiculous is that? <laughs> and that's what they're paying or on it is ridiculous. Let's get some common sense. But on top of that, I will also say that these people in this place, the bureaucrats on six to seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year, not on. And it's ridiculous to be paying them that that. So I'm looking at both sides. Paul, you know what? And I've said to you. Get yourself elected to Parliament. You can come on board with One Nation. Get yourself in here and you can have your say just like anyone else. <laughs> well, Corey promised me his spot, but anyway. No, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Pauline, I do, like oh. when you, I, I do like when you're fired up. No, no, I wasn't, you know, God love you, but I wasn't moving to South Australia. Queensland, on the other hand, uh, there's always a chat to be had. Thank you very much, Pauline. Um, all right.